hosting your website on AWS S3 is incredibly easy to do. And if you've got a registered domain name, having AWS Route 53 point that domain name to your hosted website is incredibly easy to do as well. But not only is it incredibly easy, but of course with S3 and AWS, it's incredibly reliable. But beyond that, it's also pretty cheap to do. If you're on the free tier, the only cost you're going to have is registering that domain name, which might be 10, 15, maybe 50 bucks. Uh, and even the cost of the S3 bucket, if you're not using the AWS free tier, it's probably only going to be a couple of bucks a year. And if you want to get your website up and hosted on AWS, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Just give me five or 10 minutes of your time. And I promise you, it will be very, very dangerous with AWS and S3 and creating an S3 bucket, uploading our website to it and configuring all of the appropriate properties and parameters that we need to set up before we point our domain name at it. That is exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, I've got my glasses on now, so you know I mean business. The first thing I want to show you is this website that I'm developing. Now it's just at version 1.0, so I don't want too much judgment here, but it's the foundation of an online training system that I'm building. Certificationexams.guru is the domain name I'm about to register for this site. It's going to help people get AWS certified. Now, right now, I just got a few dad jokes in here. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No eye deer. Why did the Java methods get a divorce? Because they had constant arguments. This is funny stuff, people. But this is what the, the website is. And there's only a few files there, as amazing as it looks. These are all of the, the files that I need to upload to AWS S3 in order for my web page, my website to work. So how do we do that? Well, we've got the website and you'll need your files for your website. The next thing we do is we create an S3 bucket. Now I don't have any buckets created, so I'm going to have to create one. What should I name it? Well, you have to name it your domain name. And my domain name is going to be certificationexams.guru. So I'm going to copy and paste that in there so I don't have any mistakes certificationexams.guru, that is going to be the name. Now, a lot of people get tricky here. They put www at w in. They don't put the .com or .guru extension. The name here has to be exactly the same as the name of your domain that you're about to register if you want this to be easy. Okay, that all looks good to me. Here it's going to say, do you want to block public access? No, this is a public website. I want everybody to come see this website. Now, AWS does say that's a tricky thing to do. So you have to acknowledge that well, there might be implications to that, but I'm good with that. I'm not going to use bucket versioning, no tags here, no encryption. I think everything is good there. I'm going to click on that beautiful orange button and select create bucket, but we are not done yet. I guess the first thing we could do is just upload our files to this bucket. That's fun to do. So I'm going to click on the bucket and I'm going to click on this beautiful upload button. I'm going to get all of the files for my website. Control A to copy everything and I'm going to drag them right where it says drag these files. Everything goes up there. That all looks good. Boy, I got a fast upload connection. Okay, maybe it wasn't that fast because I hadn't uploaded them already, but they're uploaded now. Still, that was pretty fast. And now I have all of these files and all of the required folders uploaded to my AWS S3 bucket. Now the files are there, but the permissions are not and the enabling of the website is not done yet, which is exactly what we've got to do next. So I'm a little lost here, not going to lie. Whenever I get lost in the admin management console, I just click on that home landing page link there and look for my service S3. And ah, there's my bucket. Now, what was I talking about? I said I had to do some permissions. Now, I got to be honest with you. I am not great at figuring out the YAML or JSON for the permissions, but I'm good at copy and pasting. And, you know, there's the documentation that I'm going to link to in the description that has the text of the JSON that you have to add in there if you want to turn your S3 bucket into something that everybody 
can see. I'm going to click that little edit link in the top right hand corner and paste that in. Now there are some changes you need to make. Notice it says uh, ARN AWS S3 bucket name. You can't leave that at bucket name. You got to put your bucket name in there, which for me is certificationexams.guru. I hope after you watch this video, you check that site out. If there's a, a big difference between the time that this was published and uh, you're viewing this, hopefully that website is up and running. Now, I'm going to save that. If you put that all in correctly, it's going to love it. It says you have successfully edited the bucket. I'm going to, again, go back to the landing page, go back to S3 because I've actually got to turn on website hosting. And that's what I do under properties. I'm heading over to properties now, scrolling down all the way to the bottom here. And one of the options here is static website hosting. And how do you know it's static? Well, it sticks to your clothes when you pull it out of the dryer. Now it says, hey, you know, if you want to play this on expert level, use Amplify. You don't have to. Just click edit here. Say you want to enable static website hosting. Type in the name of your index.html page, which hopefully is index.html. That's the landing page that people are going to go to. You can put an error page in there as well. Some redirection rules. I'm not into a redirection. I'm into just being honest and straightforward. That's why I use these AWS buckets. And when I've done that, well, it should give me a little URL here. Let's see what happens when we click that. Oh, we don't have a proper SSL certificate. So I'm going to say continue to site. We'll deal with SSL a little bit later. And boom, all of a sudden we have our application running up there in the cloud. And it looks a lot like the one that we had up there running locally. Everything is working just fine. I have to say, I am pretty darn happy about that. Now, what's next? Next, we register a domain name. And after we've registered that domain name, what we're going to do is we're going to use root 53 to point our domain name to that bucket. Okay, I'm doing just a very quick interruption here. A couple of things. Uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm hates me for some reason right now. If you're enjoying this video, if you could like, subscribe, and even leave a comment, I would really love to hear from you and, and find out if you've enjoyed this. It'll also help wake up the YouTube algorithm and maybe give my, my channel and my videos a little bit more exposure. So I would really appreciate that. The other thing too is I got a new copy of Hibernate Made Easy coming out, the best-selling book. I've updated it for version seven of Hibernate. So if you're into JPA, Spring Data, Spring JDBC, uh, please sign up for my mailing list. You don't have to buy it, but uh, I'll be raffling off some free copies for members of my newsletter. Um, and I'll also be making uh, chapters available through the newsletter as well. So sign up for that. There's a link in the description. And finally, I helped out with some final edits on Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're agile and you're working with Scrum and you're interested in getting Scrum Master certified, a lot of people have been using this book to score 100% on the product owner and Scrum Master exam. So it's available on Amazon. Go pick that up. Uh, I know Darcy would be very happy if you did. Okay, that's it. I'm really sorry to, to bother you. Let's get back into the coding. So what's next? What's next is we need to register a domain name and point that at our S3 bucket. So I'm going to head over to root 53. And when root 53 comes up, I'm going to click on that link for register domains. I've actually got one blue ski social. Don't ask what that's all about. Um, but what I want to do is I actually want to register a new domain. So in the top right hand corner, click on that gold button that says register domains. The domain name that I want is certificationexams.guru. So I'm going to search for it and ouch. 39 American dollars. I don't know if my Canadian wallet can handle that, but that's the domain name that I want. I'm going to select it, proceed to the checkout. I'm going to fill in all my personal information. And now you know where I live. If you want to send me a Christmas card, please do. I'm going to accept the agreement. I'm going to click submit and boom, all of a sudden I now have a domain name registered. Now it's going to sit there in a little bit of a limbo state. I'm going to check the status and you'll see that it says, well, it's in progress. It'll actually stay in progress for a little while. 
But when it's done, just head into the root 53's section on hosted zones. Click on hosted zones and you'll notice that you do have a new hosted zone, one of which is certificationexams.guru. Well, I have that. You're going to have your own domain name. But what I want to do is I want to point this to the S3 bucket. So I click on certificationexams.guru and I choose to create a new record. This record, I'm going to leave the subdomain blank for now. And I'm going to click this alias button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point it at an S3 endpoint. So I'm going to type in S3. I'm going to click alias to an S3 website endpoint. It's going to ask me which region. And I'm actually in US East 1. So I'm going to select that, North Virginia. And what is the name of the S3 bucket? Look at that. It already has that up there. It is certificationexams.guru. And with that done, just click that beautiful orange gold create records button. And you might want to just come in here, make sure that that new record is entered in properly. Okay, and there I can see it. It's right there, S3 website USE. So we now have that new DNS record entered in. Now, be patient. This won't register immediately. It's probably going to take maybe a day, maybe a few hours, maybe a few months. So be a little bit patient. And oh, uh, that was actually pretty fast. Uh, the website is up and running. Now, one thing to note, I don't have an SSL certificate. So I'll ask AWS to provision one for me in the future. I'll do a, another tutorial on that. But as of right now, we now have our website up and running and it's completely live on AWS. And not only is it completely live on AWS, but we've even mapped a registered domain name to that website. So certificationexams.guru is off to a great start. And I really hope that your website is off to a great start as well.